Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. So tonight's video was going to be adding a USG to our cloud key controller that, that we're using uh, to build the stack out. But I got a lot of email and a few comments that people wanted to know a little bit more about the cloud key and a little bit more about cloud access. So that's what this video is going to cover real quick. You can see I've got the, the three things that we want to cover. Uh, cloud access and in the advantages of that, the hardware spec on the cloud key and the operating system on the cloud key. So before we concentrate on number one, and I'm going to walk you completely through that, uh, let's talk about number two and number three. So one of the comments asked about a Raspberry Pi 3 and can you run this controller on that? Yes, you can. I have a couple of those out there in the wild. They run just fine. But for $79, you can get the cloud key. It runs the software beautifully. It's designed for this, and you don't have to worry about it. It plugs right into a switch. Yes, you can power a Raspberry Pi 3 with a, you know, a power over Ethernet adapter. But this is specifically designed for the power over Ethernet. So I recommend the cloud key. But real quick, let's... Um, let's take a look at the ubiquity site and we're going to come back to this hybrid cloud technology so a few things that they highlight is that with a cloud key you have the security and re reliability of a local controller absolutely true you have remote connectivity of the cloud controller absolutely true you have zero licensing or maintenance fees. Once again, whether you run it on a cloud key or you run the software yourself, you know if you're not paying a monthly reoccurring fee to someone, you're certainly not paying it to Ubiquity. You might be paying for a DigitalOcean or an AWS instance, but you are not paying Ubiquity. Now, the cloud key does have an ARM processor in it, and it is a quad-core processor. Here's the official measurements, 120 by 44 by 20 millimeters. And then they talk about the plug and play installation. So real quick, we'll SSH in. If you remember in the last video, it set the SSH username and password the same as what we use to get into the GUI of the device. Oh, and look at this. They're adding this ASCII art. So someone is going to get an A in ASCII art class, and I love it. Uh, you can see that we are now logged in. Even though we logged in as WHOW, WHOW is um, attached to this root account. Let's see. What else? Um, if you want to take a look at the, the kernel that's, that's running on here, this is the version. Um, and then this does run a version of Debian. And so if you look at the sources.list, you can see um, it looks like they're pulling from the Jesse source. And then if you want to see a little bit more, if you want to see a little bit more about the CPU, you can run it and you can see here's the architecture. Now this is the one that I've got, uh, newer models. I don't know if they have the same processor or not, but you can see that it sees four CPUs. So it obviously sees each of those cores. And you can see the, uh, the max and the min CPU. So now that we've kind of covered the hardware a little bit more, what's next on the list? We covered the hardware spec and the operating system. So we'll take those off. So now let's get down to the meat and potatoes, uh, the cloud access and the advantages. So we talked about how the cloud access is actually a hybrid cloud access and ubiquity is not storing information but they are simply a pass through a conduit to get get you into your controller um, if you don't want to use port forwarding or dnat so somebody asked well why you know what happens when you use port forwarding or dnat well when you use port forwarding first of all port forwarding opens you know basically punches a hole through your firewall for the entire world with standard port forwarding the way it is in the GUI, you have no control uh, over the IP addresses that connect to those services. 
So if you need finer grain control, if you don't want the whole world being able to get to that, then that's where you use DNAT. Then you can start dialing in that access. Now, a lot of places don't want any ports exposed. They don't want the outside world touching that controller at all. And I totally understand that. I know, you know, market segments where, you know, things have to be configured this way. So the Ubiquity cloud access makes perfect sense. Now, something I do want to talk about, okay, so here is our 5.3.8 controller. We'll log into this. Okay, and we'll go down here to settings. And we'll go to cloud access. Now, you can see that it's currently disabled. But, even though this is the cloud key, this is not a feature that is unique to the cloud key. So to use the cloud access, you do not have to have a cloud key. You just have to be running the controller software. So here is the lab controller, and you can see that we've got cloud access, and it is also disabled here. So back to the other controller that we're going to be working with, what do we need to do to do this? So if we hit enabled, it is going to ask us for our ubnt.com account credentials. And it tells you, note, that this is not the account that you use to sign into this controller. So you have to have a Ubiquity single sign-on account for this to work. Now, you don't, if you don't have one, what you're going to do is you're going to click No Account, Register Now, and it's going to bring you here. And it is, uh, you're either going to enter your username and password if you know it. I'm not going to enter mine. We're going to set up a new one. So one account for all Ubiquity services. So I'm going to go to Register. It's going to ask for my name. We'll hit register. And it's going to say, you know, it says an email has been sent to verify your account. So I'm going to verify my account real quick. Okay, so this is the standard email that you will see. It comes through, and if we click this link, it will verify the account. So we click that link, and then it opens this, and it tells us we're all set. So now we're going to go back to the controller, and we're going to enter that information. Okay, so we're back to our controller. So we are going to put in our username that we set up and our password and if the username and password is right it is going to tell us that we are connected and to disconnect you would click disable and remove cloud access but we're not going to do that we're going to apply the changes now I have no port forwarding and no DNAT configured so what we're going to do is we're going to log out of the local controller and then we're going to head back over to unify.ubnt.com. And now, uh, since I had already uh, logged in with my Ubiquity credentials, it did not uh, ask for them again. It was cached. But you can see I'm logged in. The username is h 5 And the, user, or the email is willie at h5technology.com. But you can see here is that local controller that we've got. It shows up here, right? So I can click on that. We are going to uh, do this force web RTC. And then once we do that, once we hit launch, you will see that the URL is unify.ubnt.com, 5.3.8.2, unify site default. And you can see that this is now the same controller. So if we change this, we'll say um, Willy Lab. We'll save that. And then if we come down here where it says unify.yourdomain.com, we'll say Willy Lab how x5.com. And we'll apply that. Now, if we close this, 
and we come back over here, you can see it automatically updated the, the host name. There's the IP, there's the status, clients, all that. But if we log into the local controller, there it is. Uh, there's the changes that we made through the Ubiquity site. If we go to settings, you'll see that that is there. We go to controller, willylab.howx5.com. So we managed it through this site without having to have any ports forwarded, any DNAT set up. So that's one really big you know, advantage is that you're able to remotely talk to all of those controllers you know, without having to open any outward ports, you know, punch any hole, holes in the firewall um, at any of your sites. So that's going to take care of the remote access, and I think that's going to, yeah, cloud access and the advantages. I think that that's going to wrap it up for now. So now the next video, unless I get a lot more questions about this again, the next video will be adopting that USG and starting to build out that uh, that network view. So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. And we'll see you at the USG video.